As a tournament bass angler, you can't get locked into just one bait or one technique. You always have to continue to search. And there's always something that can give you a little bit of a leg on your competition. When we went into this project, never was I thinking like, oh, okay, we're just gonna create another soft plastic brand. No, it has to be the best. Crush City is more than just a name to me. It's a lot of days out there on the water. From the hardness to the softness to the durability. Welcome, my friends, to Crush City. Every single speck of salt that you put in that bait, there's got to be a reason behind everything that we put into these soft plastics. To really dial them in, we test these baits on a variety of different bodies of water, different clarities, different conditions, different species. I even built a testing pool. Like when you're coming out with a Rapala soft plastic brand, there's a lot to live up to. And tackle is what I make my living with. I want to win. And we put the time in to perfect Crush City. And there is one bad little dude. Look at that. It's exactly how you want it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Choked it. You know, my fishing style is really like a fast pace, high energy, hitting a lot of places throughout the day. If they're not biting here, I'm moving. One thing that I pride myself on is, is trying to be as efficient as possible, but also versatile. You know, soft baits are definitely a unique category. There's a lot there. I mean, you can fish them fast, you can fish them slow on the bottom, you can swim them. So Rappler came to me and said, what are your top five soft plastic shapes that you need to win tournaments? Number one, you have to have a paddle tail swim bait. Finesse swim bait, a three inch mare, gizzard chad color, good three plus pound large mouth. Then of course, a chowder bait trailer slash spinner bait trailer. It gives them something to hold on to in that shad profile, that shad trailer. I just feel like this fish can ultimately hold on to it a heck of a lot better. Some sort of crawl, that was a big deal. The upside down appendages on the sides really are, are something that's unique to this Rapala brand. Of course, with Ned Rigs being so popular and then the finesse game, you would have to have a Ned Rig slash drop shot bait. I've catched a lot of big smallmouth this way, but you catch a big largemouth as well. Last but not least, some sort of bug to be able to flip or throw it on, a, on a, a swing head. Because of that hinge right there, those legs come up, flip up, and they flip back down. Those are the five profiles that I chose to start with. So our paddle tail swim bait is called the mare. A paddle tail swim bait has won a lot of money over the years and won a lot of big tournaments. And when you think of like a paddle tail swim bait, like it catches spotted bass, big small mouth, large mouth. So that was why the emphasis was so important here. Gizzard shad color, small profile, small bait, and it just flat out gets bit. You know, it's matching the forge type that you're fishing. When developing a soft plastic swim bait, to me, the biggest thing more than anything is subtleness. You know, when you look at a shad actually swim or a bait fish or a perch, when they swim, they don't, that tail does not move that much for them to actually be moving. And, and there's a combination of actions that I was really looking at and I wanted to knock out of the park. One, I didn't want that tail to be kicking super hard because, you know, that more aggressive action, it might draw a strike here and there, but consistency of getting bites, I feel like the more subtle it is, the more bites you're gonna get throughout the day, as well as body roll. When that shad or that bait fish is moving, that is important as well, but it still can't be too aggressive to where it turns that, that predator fish off. Now, in addition to that, it was consistency of action. Now, the action at slow speeds, it has to kick. And that was sort of something that took time to figure out the perfect hardness. 
If you went too hard, you weren't gonna be able to get those really finicky fish. You had to really slow down and get that bait to kick right. And that was sort of making the perfect softness to the bait where it would kick consistently. So now we have a three inch mare and a four inch mare. So whether I'm fishing for largemouth on the TBA and I want something more of a finesse swim bait there, um, or you know, big small mouth spotted bass, the three inch is perfect for that one as well. Absolutely awesome. Four pound smallmouth. I'll take that. 16 different colors to match whatever forage you're dealt with throughout the country. And in addition to that, whatever water clarity you're gonna deal with, we got you covered. So on the vibrating jig trailer, we named it the freeloader. And the big thing with the freeloader, when you look at it, it's very streamlined. And, and the hunting action is very key with that, okay? If you have a lot of appendages on the back of your chatterbait trailer, that bait will not hunt. You, know, you want that bait to hunt and, and switch directions. That's what triggers the bite. In addition to that, you don't need a ton of action, but that tail really does have a little bit of that realistic kicking action. Subtleness is a lot of the mainstay throughout the Crush City lineup. In addition to a great chatterbait trailer, it's a phenomenal spinnerbait trailer. This profile just is a confidence thing for me. The perfect size for whatever I'm targeting. Light wire spinnerbait, that's the deal. Every time your blade rotates, that bait and that tail is kicking back there. And it's a subtle action. When that fish, you don't realize how many times a fish is tracking your lure and looking at that lure, and then you have that little tail back there just swimming along very natural, just like a real bait fish, and that is the difference between triggering a bite and that fish tailing off and going somewhere else. In addition to that, it's a very subtle, small finesse type bait. Got him. <laughs> They're all over. Golly. That's not a small one either. Oh, got him. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. Holy smokes. So we have 17 hand-selected colors in the freeloader, and the reason behind that is I like to contrast my vibrating jigs quite a bit. So if I'm throwing a green pumpkin, and now I have so many different colors to choose from to be able to add a lot of contrast, rather than having 40 different colors in my vibrating jig box, I have five. And the trailer sort of changes the overall look of the bait. So the freeloader is four and a quarter inches, and I just felt like that was the perfect size for a chatterbait spinnerbait trailer. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so here's the cleanup crawl. When you look at this bait, for the first glance, you're gonna be like, what the heck, Wheeler, what'd you do? And I'm like, what do you mean? You're gonna be like, what are those upside down legs? It's the subtle differences, again, make all the difference. Every time that I move this bait, those legs, because of the water, will start to quiver. And so even the subtle little movement or even current underwater that's pushing this bait, those legs are constantly moving. It's something super realistic, super natural, and that can be just enough to trigger the bite. There we got him. Sweet. Oh yeah. Clean up craw. Look how fat that thing is. That's awesome, dude. The main attraction to this craw, when you look at it, is the legs. And the kicking action on this crawl is insane because one, it's consistent. That was the number one thing we needed and we wanted as a company. When we came out with a crawl, it had to be consistent our kicking action. Okay. As far as going back to the rigging on this, your body has to be the perfect size. Has to be able to hold the hook, has to be able to be put on the back of a swim jig. Also, in addition to that, put on the back of just a, whether a football jig. You know, I wanted something to where, hey, the body was gonna be thick enough to where I could put it on the back of a jig, super glue up there, and I don't have to worry about that bait ripping up is really easy and, and slipping down. In addition to that, it couldn't be too thick where your hook point wasn't going to penetrate through the plastic. But there's also like a fine line of that. It could be too thin as well where your hook point goes through there too easily. And that was the perfect size to where we got the best of both worlds on all of that. We have a raised rib hook section right there. And with that reason behind that, was basically for tech exposing. How can we add durability to the product, but then in addition to that, get a one or two more fish catches for the consumer? You know, tech exposing right there, you rip your, your, the center ribs, then you can go back down. Below that is the actual body itself, and you can tech expose into the body. 
That's not hindering your hookup ratio. That also gives you two places to actually expose your hook to get the best hookup ratio you possibly can get. So this bait is three and a half inches long and there's 17 hand selected custom colors by your truly. I mean, it's, it's, I got every color that you could possibly need in any situation that you're gonna deal with across the country. It's, it's bad to the bone. <laughs> oh, I love bass fishing. I love it, man. Okay, so the Ned BLT is definitely unique in the lineup because it's a completely different material. Um, you know, when we set out to make a Ned style bait, it was like, all right, how are we going to be different? You know, first you definitely want durability and you want a very high floating bait. For me personally, that's always what I want. Um, but you also want a little bit of action. So we created a three inch tapered worm with TPE. So it's super flexible, has a lot of, you know, like really nice material, has some really good colors to it. But the key with that was three inches, like I feel like it's the perfect size, whether you're dealing with large mouth spotted bass or small mouth. Okay, in addition to that, I liked it. I, I, of course, like to use it for drop shot as well. But, but really the whole key to this was, all right, how do we have a bait that floats a heavier weight than normal, okay? So being that it is three inches, and, and it's not a, a big profile bait, it's still finesse, it does do a really good job of floating a 316. What I mean by that is standing up a 316 ounce Ned head up to a quarter ounce Ned head and bring that bait up there and it almost you know where that bait being a smaller profile bait you have to get that bait up off the bottom a little bit where those fish can actually visually see it in addition to that that tail being tapered allows for it to have a very good action rather than being stubby it has a little really good little subtle action. So when you shake that, it's constantly moving. A little bit of waves or a little bit of current is moving that bait. That, that bait's constantly being that it's up there standing up straight. It's always in those, in that current, in the middle of the current, you know, and it's getting pushed and it, though that little tail's moving. And, and that subtleness, you know, having action is key. Again, subtleness of that little tail moving that's what I'm thinking. I'm envisioning that fish going down there on that bait, looking at that bait, and that tail just sitting there quivering. And then that's a lot of times when they commit. So for me, it's 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 durability one, having a little bit better action, having um, you know higher floating material, material that's going to you know really have a good action, keep that bait up off the bottom. In addition to all those attributes, that makes this bait so great. One thing that I had to have was scent. It has to have the right amount of scent where, look, it, it's been proven, especially with finesse tactics, when they're dealing with a lot of pressure, having a little bit different scent, having a strong scent can generate bites. So the BLT is three inches long and comes in 16 custom colors that are perfect for net rigging. There he is, good fish right there. When the bike gets tough, pick up that net BLT and it just gets bit, man. Flat out catches him. All right, so the Bronco Bug, I'm not gonna hear to pick favorites, but the Bronco Bug is very unique and it is a bad little dude. Yes. <laughs> hey, it's like you're chewing that thing, boy. At first glance, you're gonna be like, wait a second, Jacob. Like, what What exactly does this thing do? We just, just, just bear with me. So the one thing we really wanted to do was we wanted to have the perfect diameter of plastic. Um, the thickness of this bait, we have a double raised ribs on each side. Okay, and the whole key with that is being raised ribs on each side it allows you to be able to swap back and forth or if you rip up one side of the bait or start to rip up one side of the bait, you can go to the other side and have that exposing portion on the other side as well, which is ultimately gonna allow you to have a little bit more durability and catch one or two more fish. So the other thing you're gonna notice is this bait has, the, the appendages are facing upward. The tentacles are facing upward, which, hey, they're gonna catch the water and they're always gonna be quivering. Now, the business end, the bottom end of this bait is what's so unique, okay? When you watch a crawl kick back and, and run away from its prey and try to get out of an area, it has this really unique undulating action. And that is what the Bronco Bug does. It's the most realistic crawl-like bait I've ever seen, okay? And what I mean by that is, so when the Bronco Bug hits the bottom, it has a really unique recoiling action. So every time it hits the bottom, after it's doing its little kick, those legs will come forward, they'll hit 
the top of his little head and come back as they rest. And that's something that's sort of like, and you think of a crawl, he comes up in a defensive position, then he comes back down. And I think that is like, what is the ultimate bite trigger for a lot of bass. Like they see that, oh, you're gonna play that way? Uh, no, no, no. You know, it, it's a commitment. And they're like, oh, no, 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 don't mess with me. So the Bronco Bug is four inches long and comes in 15 custom colors. It takes time to get it perfect. And it takes time to develop something special. It's a lot of days out there on the water to say, hey, I think this is right. And if it's not saying, hey, no, this is not good enough. We gotta tweak this a little bit more. And we've put the time in to perfect Crush City.